Good morning, good morning. I hope everyone is having a great day. I actually just completed an intro to JavaScript bootcamp that was hosted by Code First Girls. I want to show you guys my mandatory group project and completion of the program. This was a beginning course and we covered things like HTML tags, JavaScript event listeners, functions, loops, local storage, and CSS. So let's get to the project. So here is our project, which we worked on over a span of two weeks. We use CodePen throughout the entire course and for our projects. My other team members were Carmisha Lozana. I will leave a link to her LinkedIn profile below. And Kayla Puma. Shout out to Kayla. She doesn't have a LinkedIn at the moment. So let, now let's walk through the website and how to use it. First off, I didn't do a lick of CSS. That portion was handled by Kayla. I stuck to my favorite area, which is logic or back end. So in the HTML, I created the top three fields and the check availability button, which was simply a label tags and input tags and then a button here at the bottom. Nothing too fancy here. So that was my portion for HTML. And I also added a um, unordered list here and that will be populated later when we wanted to display our dates for the availability. For JavaScript, I created the mock data and passed it to our local storage. I know a database would be the best option, but due to time, the course taught local storage instead. So in my code, I created an object called available dates and that um, took in the available dates as the key and the open spots as that value there. And then I set the object as a value in my local storage for later use. So as you can see here, here is my object with the key as the date and the um, value as the spots available. And I send it to local storage here. And, um, I'll actually show you that in the local storage. It actually is um, stored there. So let's go to inspect. And then if we go to application, you can see the local storage here with the dates and the values here. And we needed this um, for later use so we can call it and show what dates were still available. So how are we calling our local data? So we actually call the local data through a event listener function. Uh, what I did was I added an event listener to that check availability button here. So upon click, it is going to run the following function. And this is where I am calling the data back in this function. So first things first, I have a condition for if the user has already uh, displayed the available dates, it will not duplicate that information. Instead, it will set the visibility to hidden and it will remove each child if the button is clicked again. But if you were to click the button and the uh, information was already hidden, it will run the following code here which is going into that local storage that I just showed you guys and grabbing back out my available date object. And then from there, we loop through each day. Uh, here's the for loop. And then we are creating a list item for each date. And then we are adding the information for each date, which is the converted date and the value of that date. So that is how we handle that data for the available dates here. And I'll show you what else I was responsible for next. So I come back in with uh, checking fields that are not empty. 
Um, this was actually in our submit ad event listener function. So whenever the user would submit the reservation, um, this function will be called. And what I did was I had to go through and grab each uh, field here, grab the fields of value and check to make sure it wasn't empty. So um, if the fields were missing or empty, the user will receive an alert. I can show you that here really quick. If I remove my name and I try to submit, you see that, um, oh, also then pick a dish. So let's pick a dish and then I'll show you about the name. So let's say we had that dish picked and we were to submit, it would tell you to enter your name. So that was something else I was responsible for, just making sure that the field was, the forms uh, was filled out and that we wasn't missing any sort of data. Um, another thing I had to do was also uh, grab the actual value from each radio head button. And that would um, be passed to our user object, which I created uh, more so at the bottom. I'll show you that as well, guys, um, in one second. But first, I want to show you that I also had to check the dates and spots to make sure they were available in our local storage. So to do that, let me show you guys. So here in this condition, um, we already set our uh, variable to grab the data from the local storage. So here we're grabbing the date that the user entered and we're checking to see if that date is actually one of the dates in our object. So if it um, is not a date in our object, we will, instead of continue on with our function, we will stop and tell them to check those seats and make sure they have the right one. So let me show you that part here. So we were to pick any random date that wasn't available and submit it will tell you, okay, this is not one of the available dates and try to pick another one. So I also was responsible for that and um, making sure that, you know, the user were able to pick the correct dates because why would you be able to pick a date that wasn't available? It's, you know, it's a waste of time. So down here is actually me creating the user object that we're going to store in local uh, storage as well. And this is what passes the alert um reservation note at the end of our website so i'm grabbing the date the name the guest and the dinner and i'm storing it as an object as well let me show you guys that really quick and if we go to application you can see that information here so this is where at the end it is great taking that data and showing the user their reservation. So if we were to submit this now, I didn't pick any dates. Uh, okay, so available dates, let's just say the 27th, which has four slots available. We only want two, so this should go through. And as you can see, it says uh, the date, my name, guest, and what I picked to eat. And that is where we're grabbing it from that local storage. And then from that local storage, we are also updating the original um, date open spots. So if I was to check availability again, it will be updated to two now because we took two slots out. So that is about it for my uh, project. I would like to thank my other teammates. I would like to thank Cold First Girls, and I would like to thank my amazing instructors, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.